If you have some device on your network that's running a server like maybe a VPN server, you'll probably have it port forwarded so it can be accessed from outside of your network. So if you ever need to access it, you will connect with your network's public IP address. There is one problem with this though. If you have like a popular internet service provider, your public IP address won't be static. This means it will keep changing depending on how your ISP manages that. You could go ahead and try to ask for a static IP address, but an even better option would be to use DuckDNS. DuckDNS is a dynamic DNS which will detect when your public IP address has changed and it will update its servers. They will provide you with the subdomain with the name of your choosing and that name will stay constant. Whenever your public IP address changes, you won't need to worry about it. So if this works for you, please leave a like and subscribe and let's start the video. So what you first need to do is go to duckdns.org and I recommend just signing in with Google, it's the easiest. You don't even have to make an account with DuckDNS. Now here I'm just going to click continue. And now you should be signed in but you have to click on reCAPTCHA. Now you've successfully made your account and you can see your token over here but I'm going to blur that out. Now all you need to do is choose a subdomain, it can be random, it, it really does not matter. And then go ahead and click add domain. Now you should see your current public IP address, and then you can see the domain over here. And the full domain would be this over here. There will be a .duckdns.org at the end of the subdomain. And this is the domain you'll be using instead of your public IP address. Now on the computer that you want to run DuckDNS, we're going to need to install Docker. So I'll briefly show you how to install Docker and Docker Compose. But if you do need another tutorial for that, there are many videos on YouTube on how to install it for each operating system. So make sure you also install Docker Compose with Docker. Now on Windows, you're going to have to download the Docker uh, app with the GUI, but you can still use the command line tools. And that's what we're going to be using. So if you have something like a Raspberry Pi and it doesn't have a desktop environment, you can go ahead and download it from here. But if it's the 64-bit, you'll use the Debian link. So for this video, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi, so I'll be clicking Debian. Then over here I'll just scroll down and I'm just going to be using this convenient script and it will automatically install docker for us. Now I'm just going to make this bigger so you'll be able to see it better. So I'm just going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi. Now here we're going to paste the commands. So the first one is this. And then to actually run the file that we have here, we'll do sudo and then sh dot slash get docker dot sh and we can tap to autocomplete. Now docker should be fully installed and if you're downloading the docker GUI app like the desktop app, it should do all this for you and install the command line tools for you. You will probably also need to install docker compose so we can use our package manager for that. So with any Debian or Ubuntu based distribution, you'd have to run this command to install it. For any other distribution with a different package manager, you'd have to run a different command. Now to check if this is installed, we could just type sudo docker ps. Now we're going to use sudo because we need permissions to actually run this docker command. If you're on Windows, you can't use sudo. It will probably automatically work with just docker ps. And then you should see all the containers running, but we don't have anything running right now. So from now on, all the commands I'll be using in this video will work on every single operating system, except for the text editor, I'm going to be using nano. So on Windows, you won't be able to use that, but on Mac and Linux, it should work. So I'm just going to make a new folder and then name that DuckDNS. And now if I type ls, you should see the DuckDNS folder over here. I'm also just going to remove this get docker script because we don't need it anymore. So to enter the DuckDNS directory, we can do change directory and then DuckDNS tab to autocomplete. So right now we have nothing in this directory, but we're going to make a docker compose file. A docker compose file is basically a docker run command, but in a file format. So we can add our configurations in there and we can use that file to start up our docker container. So to do this, we're going to type nano if you're on a Mac or Linux machine and then type docker dash compose dot YAML. This can also be YML. It doesn't really matter. Now over here, the first thing we need to type is services. And then we'll list all of our services in here. 
Now when you click tab, it should put two spaces there. If it doesn't, you can manually put two spaces whenever you need to click tab. But just make sure it doesn't look weird. So it just has to be two spaces for a tab. Now after you type services, you're going to have to click tab or two spaces. And then here we can type duck DNS and then colon. It really doesn't matter what you name it here. And then we click enter again and then two tabs or four spaces. Then we're going to name the container with container underscore name. And I'm also going to name this duck DNS. Now on the next line, we're going to type what image we want to use. This image will have all the dependencies for DuckDNS to run in a container. So type image colon, and the image we're going to be using is from linuxserver.io. And that is how you type it out. Linuxserver.io is known for their Docker images, and they do update it pretty frequently, so I'm just going to use their Docker image. And then if you put colon and then latest, it should use the latest version of this Docker image. Whenever it notices there's a new image, it'll just use the latest one and then make your container. You can also specify a network mode. And these are the networks that you can create with the docker create network command. And basically, if you want this container to be separate from your other containers, if you have any other containers, you can make your own docker network and that container will be separated from any other containers you have. Now there's nothing wrong with this docker container, but you can never be too safe. So if you want to do that, you can make your own docker network and then place it over there. But I'm not going to be doing that in this video. Next, you need to specify the environment variables you want to pass to the container. So to do this, we type environment, colon, enter, and then three tabs this time, or six spaces. Then a the dash, and then the first thing we need to specify is your token. It'll be in all caps, and it's the token that you see on the website of DuckDNS. Now I see mine over here, and I'm just going to copy that and paste it into the docker compose file. The next thing we're going to do is specify the subdomains we want to update whenever our public IP address changes. So now you can just copy and paste the domain that you have. This is what it is for me. You just put in your subdomain there. Then for our last environment variable, I'm not sure if this makes any difference, but we could put the time zone. And for the Pacific Standard Time, you can just put America and then Los Angeles. This is optional and I don't even know if it'll affect the container anyways. Now the very last thing we need to do is click tab two times, and then type restart, and then set that to always. So if something happens to the container, it'll always restart itself back up, and you don't have to worry about manually starting it again. Then you can hit Control X, Y, and then Enter. Now, you should be in the same directory with this Docker Compose file, and you can check that by typing ls. Then to start up this Docker Compose file, we can do sudo docker-compose up to start it up, dash d for it to run in the background. And if you ever want to restart it, you could type dash dash force dash recreate, and then that will completely destroy the container and restart it itself back up. No data will be lost because we're not really saving any data to this. All it is is just connecting to the DuckDNS servers. So after you click enter, it should just start up instantly after it downloads the DuckDNS Linux server IO image. It should be pretty quick. It's not a large image. And now you're completely done with this DuckDNS Docker container. Now whenever DuckDNS notices that your public IP address has changed, it will automatically update itself and you won't have to worry about your IP address changing ever again.